Hey guys, welcome back to another glorious review. Today we're looking at the Alien Warrior from Alien vs. Predator Requiem, which is made by NECA, I do believe. And uh, this figure is extremely rare, whether it's new or used, and it goes for about 100 bucks. So, yeah. I happened to get it right around the time the movie came out, and even though the movie was kind of crappy, I still thought some of the designs in the movie were pretty cool. For example, uh, I really like the design of this alien, particularly. I think it looks really, really cool, really scary. It's kind of reminiscent of the alien from Aliens, James Cameron's movie. And, um, pretty much. It's kind of reminiscent of that, and, uh, but I think it has its own unique design to it. It's really cool, um, in my opinion. And even though, again, the movie is pretty crappy, I still thought some of the designs in the movie were pretty cool. I mean, for example, we got to take a look at the Yoing Homeworld, which was kind of cool. Um, but yeah, so I thought this was pretty cool looking, so I got it. I got it again around the time the movie came out, so it wasn't as expensive then. But, you know, now it goes for a hundred bucks. So this is an extremely rare figure, and I don't think it's worth spending a hundred bucks on, but it is really nice. If you can find it really cheap somewhere, then I definitely would pick it up. It is a pretty awesome figure. Uh, it's an awesome design, in my opinion. And please don't hate me for saying that. Again, I hate the movie just as much as you do. But I really like the design of the Alien Warriors in that movie. That's about the most I can say about it. Anyway. So, that's... So, I think with all the other Alien figures, from that toy line, they all came with this stereotypical base, which is these two rock pieces, and in the middle of that, there's like this bridge thing, which is you can move it around so you can put the only in different poses. So it's okay, it's not great. It's the same thing, it's the same base for each figure, so I don't think the Predator came with any with the base, but, but whatever. Um, this is kind of, I think, one of the first Alien and Predator figures that NECA made, actually. So this was before they started making their Predator line and, you know, a bunch of other stuff. This was back in the day, I guess. This is, one, I guess, one of their feature figures. So I'd like to start off by uh, showing you guys the detail of the figure, which is uh, astounding, really. Um, they did a great job on these. I mean, even though these are older figures, I, I still think the detail is phenomenal. So let's get started. I'm going to take them off in space so you guys can take a look. Uh, so here he is. Uh, first thing I noticed was the ridges going up and down his head, which I think looked phenomenal. Looks really, really cool. I really like it. I really like the mouth. The mouth is really scary. Really cool. The mouth does not have any articulation, sadly. But you can get some really good head movement. But I'll talk about the articulation in a minute. Uh, the, uh, let's go with the back, I guess. The back looks pretty cool. The rib cage looks pretty good. The abdomen looks good. Um, uh, back looks pretty cool. He's got these, I like these. These are cool. All those are kind of standard for every alien, pretty much. Except the newborn, I guess. Got an amazing tail. I love the tail on these guys. The tail is so cool. It's like a crab, almost like a crab-like armored tail, but it also kind of looks kind of organic and liquidy, and this looks really cool, in my opinion. Uh, like the fin here, the fin looks really nice. The legs are pretty good, they're pretty standard, but they look good. Um, but yeah, I mean, this these definitely look different from the aliens that were in the first Alien and Predator movie. They don't... These aliens are more reminiscent, I said, like I said, of the um, the ones from the James Cameron movie, and that's I think that's what they were inspired by because I was watching the special features and they wanted to have the an alien that didn't have the full dome and just had the bony ridges and maybe like a little bit of dome right there, so that way it could hide in the shadows a bit better. Then again, though the movie was, was the movie itself was really dark, so you couldn't really barely see these guys, so. 
So it's kind of hard to appreciate the design. We can barely see them in the film. I mean, the movie was really dark. But, I mean, gosh, that looks so cool. I love that. The head is awesome. I love, this is my favorite uh, alien design, I think. Or one of them, anyway. That and, of course, the original. So, but I think this is really cool. This is almost like the original combined with the James Cameron uh, design. So, I think this is really cool. So let's go into uh, articulation. Um, like I said earlier, the thing that you get most out of this figure is the head movement. You get some really, you can move it up and down, you can move it side to side, you can tilt it. It's really nice, it looks like it's on a ball joint. It's a really nice movement, it's really sleek and agile. Um, the shoulders do not go in and out, but they do go, I think, 360. Um, so that's pretty good. The uh, bicep goes, free, would go 360, well, yeah, it goes 360. Elbows go up and down. Uh, the wrist turns. I like the sculpting on the hands, forgot to mention that, that's pretty cool. Um, nice hands, got four fingers, which is kind of interesting. Um, uh, the the uh, waist goes... Well, it would go 360 if it weren't for the design of the creature, but that's not the figure's fault, that's just the creature. But you don't really need to go 360, you get some pretty good movement out of the waist. It also tilts, like I said, and it also goes up and down. So you get some really good movement out of the neck, the head, uh, well, I guess the whole head piece, and you get some really good movement out of the waist, and also really good movement out of the legs. The legs go in and out, they can tilt. They can go up. Well, they can't. They can't really go up and down as much, but they can do everything else. Uh, the bicep can go 360. It's kind of a bit stiffer, but you can do it. Um, the knee goes up and down. The ankles up and down. The tail. Um, I don't think it can do 360. I'm not going to test that. But it looks like it's glued in there pretty good. Um, it is a bendy tail though, so you can pose it. So that's cool. It's a very really stiff bendy tail, but it's a very really nice bendy tail. I really like the tail again. Um, it's really, really cool. I really like the design, I guess. Um, I guess the things I don't like about the figure is that I wish it, the arm movement was a bit better. Like, I really want the arms to go in and out. But again, it's not, that, you know, it's not as limited as, you know, Todd McFarlane's Alien figures, which I'm not trying to downgrade, like his figures were awesome too, but they were awesome in their own way. And I'm going to show you guys some of those today when we do the scaling. But I'm going to go in and put him back on his base. So we have the base. Here's the base. It's got some rocks and stuff on it. It's pretty standard. Um, the base does help him a lot. The base kind of really does help him stand, so I do recommend putting. Let him stay on the base, and it's, he goes in there pretty easy, he goes in these little pegs. And as you can see, he stands up pretty good. The tail does get in the way though, so when I was putting this guy on the shelf, I had kind of had the you know, have the tail curve around other figures in order to get him in there. And this guy's been on the shelf for a while, so. But again, this is an awesome, awesome figure. Uh, I really like it. It's probably my favorite figure from the uh, AVPR line. Even though I don't like the movie, and I'm pretty sure no one else does, I still think this figure is pretty cool. I will say this, I was a lot less mad at AVPR than I was at Prometheus, if that makes sense. I do not like Prometheus at all. There's nothing I like about Prometheus. I think. Yes. At least we actually got something good out of ABPR, which was this cool alien design and these cool figures, which sadly now go for $100. I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a 360 view of uh, this figure. You do, I will say this, you kind of have to have him crouching, I guess, for him to stand up. Wait, no you don't, never mind, I, I lied. But it does work better if he's kind of crouching like this. So, uh, you do get some good poses out of him. I think you can pose him pretty well. Um, I really like the figure again. I think it looks really nice. Um, 
looks really cool. Again, it's one of my favorite Yoni designs, even though I don't like the movie, but I've already said enough about that. Um, I think I mentioned the ankle scope down, but anyway, so let's do some scaling. Um, with me, I have uh, one of the later NECA figures, which is the NECA Predator. Uh, I don't know which Predator this is, but I have it, and there it is. So that's it next to that. Um, this figure is bigger than this one, but that's because they made this figure way before they made this one. So, yeah. Now, here's the figure that actually should be scaled with this, and that's the uh, NECA Wolf Predator from that toy line. The battle damage one, I believe. Uh, this is not my favorite Predator design, but again, I mean, I did like the toy line, so that's kind of why I picked it up. Uh, so, yeah. I think the Owen is actually bigger than the Predator, now that I think about it, because he's only, he, right now he's kind of crouching, and this guy's almost fully standing up. So I guess the Owen was bigger than him, possibly, in the movie. Yeah, so that's the neck of Predator, Wolf Predator, and I also have with me um, the NECA Pred Alien, which is also, it's not my favorite design, but I do like it, for the most part. I just wish it looked a bit more intimidating, but here it is next to that. Um, nice detail on this figure, by the way. So, yeah, so, this is a pretty big alien, considering how like, he's crouching, and he's almost the same height as all these guys. So, yeah, it's pretty interesting. I also have with me uh, the dog alien from McFarlane Toys. This one's kind of beat up, but I still have it. Here it is. You guys can see that. Sorry. I have it, though. I have a bunch of alien predator figures, probably too many. So, also, um, if you also want to see some more scaling, I have it. I also have a Todd McFarlane uh, alien resurrection alien warrior figure. So, also one of my favorite—not my favorite alien design, but one of my favorite alien figures—is this one. But I like this one, I think, a bit more. This one's awesome. Um, but yeah, so that's these guys next to each other. Um, so yeah, that's, I think that's about it for this review. Overall, I say I would, I can't recommend this figure for hundred dollars, but if you could find it for maybe fifty bucks or less, then yeah, pick it up. It's a really cool figure. Um, it looks really nice on the shelf. It's an awesome design. In my opinion, anyway, as an artist, I think it's an awesome design. So it has my seal of approval. Um, you'll probably get more enjoyment out of this figure than you will the actual movie. So, yeah. Um, if you haven't seen any of the Alien Predator movies, go watch the first one and don't watch the second one. Unless you want to just have some fun making fun of a movie. But that's about it. Um, but yeah, this is um, the APPR Alien Warrior. Uh, it has my seal of, people, seal of approval. I think it's awesome. I highly recommend it. It's got some pretty good movement all around. Uh, but not for 100 bucks. Don't buy it for 100 bucks. You can probably you can get some newer Alien figures from NECA for far less. You can get the Rebel Tech Queen Alien for I think less than that. So. I, w I can't recommend it for hundred bucks. You know, if you want to get an alien figure for hundred bucks, then I would save up your money and get the Todd McFarlane Alien Queen. That figure is awesome. Absolutely get that figure. But anyway, if you can find this guy for like fifty bucks, even without his base, I think he'd be worth it. Just build your own base for him. Um, let's see. How how well is he stand for after base? Okay, never mind. You need the base. I'm sorry. Don't get. I, I take that back. He needs the base. As you can see, he does have very loose joints, but the base kind of helps fix that. So. But yeah. So, pick this guy up if you can find him. He's pretty cool. Uh, he is very very rare. I'm lucky enough to have him. 
I'm very proud to have him in my collection. He is one of my favorite Ian Wayne figures. And he's definitely my favorite figure from that line, from the AVP art line. He's really nice. I'm going to go ahead and shut up now. And thank you guys for watching. And as always, something, 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 something. Sorry, I'm not really good with the bad guys. But I do love you guys. Thank you for watching. S subscribe if you'd like. And if you see something you know, that you want to request, go ahead and request it. I'll totally you know, do a review of it just for you. Um, but as always, thanks for watching. And thank you for your time. And until next time, bye-bye.